Please help. My eight-year-old grandson, Mike who had been missing for about a week, appeared suddenly at dawn at my house. He was mysteriously covered in mud, and his clothes were badly torn. First, we need to contact your mom and your dad. However, as I reached for my smartphone, he gripped my hand tightly. Don't contact them at all. After hearing more details from Mike, an unbelievable truth about my son and his wife was revealed, and my anger reached its peak. This can't be allowed. I will never forgive them. Later, as I comforted Mike, I vowed revenge against my son and his wife. My name is Anne. I am 65 years old and retired, now volunteering at a local children's home. By the way, I wonder how Mike is doing. While quietly watching the children play energetically in the garden of the facility, I found myself thinking about my grandson. However, my relationship with my son and his wife is not very close. They dislike inviting me to their home and I hardly ever get to see my 8-year-old grandson. Whenever I do see Mike, he doesn't talk much, just silently obeys his parents' instructions. Mike is surprisingly obedient for his age, a very good boy. I used to think so at first, but as time went on, I began to feel that something was wrong. Mom, you came without notice again? Is it inconvenient when I come? Not really, but next time, could you give me a heads up before you come? My son, Daniel always looks inconvenienced when I visit his home. Indeed. I should probably call before visiting, but I'm usually refused when I say I want to come over. Despite this, wanting to check whether my son, Daniel was leading a proper life, I chose to visit his home without notice. I'm really sorry, I didn't expect you to come suddenly, the room is a bit messy. My daughter-in-law, Julia doesn't seem to be trying to hide her coolness. I think Mike is probably washing dishes as I can hear the sound of water flowing and dishes clinking in the kitchen. Hello, Mike. As I quietly opened the kitchen door and peeked inside while calling out, Mike stopped the water and slowly stepped down from the stool he was using to wash the dishes. Mike seemed surprised by my sudden visit, and while a bit bewildered, he looked up shyly in silence. Mike, say hello to Grandma properly. Hello. He greeted me in a trembling voice. Maybe you could speak to him in a kinder tone? He's clearly scared. Sorry, sorry. I'll be more careful from now on. By the way, why are the curtains closed in the middle of the day? What? That's irrelevant. When the subject of the curtains came up, my son suddenly exploded in anger. I couldn't understand why he was so angry. That's because the sunlight today is particularly strong, and the light coming in through the window is very glaring for me. My eyes are very sensitive, and I'm not good with bright light. If you had started with that, I could have understood. As I glared at my son with a wry smile, he clicked his tongue in irritation. Mike, why don't you go and play over there for a bit? Mom and Dad need to talk. No, don't mind me. I came here to see Mike. Mike? After hearing his father's stern voice, Mike turned pale and hurried up to the second floor bedroom. So, what brings you here? Actually, it's almost Mike's birthday, right? I wasn't sure what he would like as a gift, so I came to ask about his favorite things. And, that's really not necessary. You don't have to worry about anything. While my son frowned, my daughter-in-law seemed to be trying to make me feel better. I felt something was off about the atmosphere of the house, but at that moment, I couldn't pinpoint the specific reason. I need to start preparing dinner soon. Reluctantly, I left their house that day. Mike's behavior. I feel like there's something more to it than just being quiet. It might just be my intuition after all these years, but I feel like something isn't right. Although turned away by my son and his wife, 
I couldn't give up feeling something was wrong, so I returned to their house a week later with a birthday gift I had chosen. However, all I got from my son was a cold request to go home. I just want to properly celebrate my grandson's birthday, what's wrong with that? But the main person, Mike, isn't here, so what can we do? What? Why isn't Mike here? Tell me more. As I pressed for more details, Daniel grimaced and muttered, damn. Sensing a highly unusual situation, I dug deeper and an unbelievable truth came to light. Shockingly, Mike had left a note saying, I'm running away from home, and had been missing for a week. We've been trying hard to find him. We've posted his picture on local bulletin boards, asked neighbors to help by passing around a flyer, and of course, we've reported it to the police. That's really tough, but do you have any idea why Mike would make such a big decision? It's my fault. I scolded Mike a bit harshly for wanting a toy he saw in a recent TV commercial. That's why. She choked up and began to cry. But I still strongly felt that there might be another reason behind all this. It's hard to believe that Mike, who usually listens to everything his parents say, would suddenly start acting so selfishly. Eventually, after being firmly convinced by my son and his wife that they had already reported to the police and all we could do was wait, I had no choice but to return home. However, I was so worried about my grandson's safety that I couldn't relax, and I was hardly able to sleep at night. Mike, please be safe. Even when I lay in bed, my eyes were wide awake, and I kept getting up to go to the kitchen to drink some warm cocoa repeating this several times. During this time, the sky gradually began to lighten outside. That's when I heard a very weak child's voice from outside the window, Grandma, Grandma, are you there? That voice, could it be? I quickly put on my sandals and ran out to the yard, and there stood a child covered in mud with his clothes torn to shreds. It was definitely my grandson, Mike, and I immediately ran to him. Mike. I'm so glad you're safe. With tears streaming down my cheeks, I hugged him tightly, not minding the mud. Grandma, I need help. Understood, but first we need to tell your parents about the situation. Don't contact them at all. The moment I tried to use my smartphone, he gripped my hand tightly and desperately shook his head to stop me. Seeing the frightened expression on Mike's face, I felt even stronger about the uneasy feeling I had long had towards my son's family. Mike, can you tell Grandma what happened? When I heard the circumstances from Mike, an unbelievable fact was revealed. Just a week ago, Mike was suddenly taken to the mountains by my son and his wife and left there with the words, we don't need you anymore. The more I heard about it, the clearer it became that Mike had been very badly treated by his parents on a regular basis. How could they? This should not be allowed. Knowing this shocking truth, I decided to shelter my grandson at my home while considering some form of punishment for my son and his wife. First, to understand the extent of Mike's injuries, I took him to the bathroom to wash off the mud, and as he described, I saw many bruises and marks that looked like burns from cigarettes. They've been cleverly targeting places that can be covered by clothes. How malicious. I was so furious at the cunning of my son and his wife that I felt like my head would explode with anger. Somehow calming my rage, I first took pictures of the scars. Then I cleaned Mike up and took him to the hospital, where I managed to get a medical report. I also listened carefully to Mike's detailed account and took meticulous notes. If I don't listen to what mom and dad say, they always treat me terribly. As he spoke in a fading voice, Mike held back tears, biting his lip. Mike wasn't just obedient, he was always scared of his parents. I wondered why I hadn't realized this before and felt angry at myself for not seeing it sooner. The moment I tried to pick up my smartphone, Mike gripped my hand tightly and shook his head desperately. 
Seeing his fear-filled actions, my distrust towards my son and his wife surged again. I'm sorry, Mike. If I had known the truth sooner, I could have protected you better. We hugged quietly, and tears flowed unstoppable. Later, I left Mike to watch the house while I discreetly gathered information from the residents of the area where my son and his wife lived, making sure they wouldn't notice. Daniel's house has the curtains drawn all day again today. I took careful notes of the information I got from the people around and recorded the more critical parts with a voice recorder. After these preparations, I headed to their house to confront them. It's you, Mom. Mike still hasn't been found. I hope he comes back soon, but I'm so worried I can't sleep at night. It's already been a week since Mike disappeared, so something bad might have happened. Watching my daughter-in-law crying and my son trying to comfort her, their act seemed so unnatural and theatrical that I stared at them with a calm and cold gaze. While holding my smartphone, I calmly asked my son. About Mike, I heard you filed a missing person report with the police, but I suspect that might be completely false. What's the truth? My son's face changed at my sudden question, and he answered with evident unease. What? Why would you suddenly say that? Of course, it's true. However, when I checked with the police myself, they said they hadn't received any such report. What do you say to that? Panicked by his lie being exposed, he contorted his face and yelled. Mind your own business. Beside him, Julia stopped her fake tears and clearly showed her agitation. I pressed them further. Also, I've heard from the neighbors that they frequently hear Mike's screams and cries from behind those ever-closed curtains. How do you explain that? What? Who said that? My son raised his voice angrily. In a calm voice, I confronted them. You weren't keeping the curtains closed to prevent Mike's cries of abuse from being heard outside, were you? No, that's not it. It was just part of disciplining him, I only scolded him a bit harshly. Watching my daughter-in-law weakly make excuses, I pressed on calmly. Really? Then what exactly are these supposed to be? I pulled several photos from my bag and spread them out on the table. The photos clearly recorded various bruises and burn marks on Mike's body. Are you still going to claim this was just discipline? These photos are evidence of serious abuse that should be reported to the police. Enraged, he yelled, damn this. He tore the photos he was holding into pieces. However, since I had safely stored all the original data, his actions were completely futile. Resisting any further is useless. I already have specific testimony from Mike and a doctor's report that proves the abuse he endured. Shocked and lost for words, he blurted out. What? Mike is still alive. To speak about your own child in such a way, something is seriously wrong with you. Mike is now in a safe place. Have you forgotten what profession I used to work in? Indeed, I used to teach at a school and have extensive experience in dealing with situations of child abuse. I never imagined that my son would do such a thing, and I deeply regret and feel responsible for the significant harm Mike has suffered. At that moment, my daughter-in-law quietly looked down and began to laugh in a low, eerie tone. This creepy laughter only intensified the tense atmosphere. The situation developed in an unexpected direction. Suddenly, she burst out laughing and said, It's finally been revealed. And, you really are sharp. She then quickly ran down the hallway, and before anyone could understand what was happening, she returned from the entrance with a bat. Daniel, we have no choice but to deal with your mother now. Sighing heavily, he said quietly. Sorry, Mom, but from now on, you'll have to stay silent forever. Incredibly, he and his wife then raised a bat and swung it at my head. 
If you hadn't treated Mike so terribly in the first place, none of this would have happened. Why did you do this? He responded coldly. I never liked kids. But when Julia got pregnant, we had no choice but to raise one. I've always believed that children should simply obey their parents. Continuing provocatively, she said. Besides, it would have been nice if he could at least manage some chores around the house. But, you know, a week ago he broke my favorite dish. I just thought we might not need such a useless child anymore. She said this with a cold laugh. You left Mike alone in the mountains just for that. Julia's cold and unloving words shocked me deeply, filling me with disappointment and doubt. I wondered where I had gone wrong in raising my son, questioning myself without finding any answers, feeling utterly miserable. You must realize that this kind of behavior solves nothing, right? It's not too late, just turn yourself in. Smirking, he replied. Are you joking? If you and Mike disappear, all our problems will be solved. That's the easiest way. She continued more provocatively. After we take care of you. We'll take Mike to a quiet place too. So don't worry. Feeling my life was in danger, I immediately took action and hurried down the hallway to the front door. But the moment I tried to escape outside, my son grabbed me from behind and put me in a tight hold. This is the end. Give it up, mom. This is the end. Please give my regards to Mike. With a sneer, she raised the bat towards my head. At that moment, suddenly, the voice of the police echoed around us. Stop right there. Don't move. A strong voice commanded, and a school acquaintance I had previously contacted arrived with the police. The couple was subdued by force on the spot and arrested on the spot. However, as soon as they were handcuffed, they suddenly started to cry meekly. Suddenly raising his voice, he shouted. Wait. What will happen to Mike if we're taken away? With icy sarcasm, she coldly replied. The poor child will probably cry alone from loneliness. No one had any sympathy for their plea, forgetting their past actions. Calmly, I told them. Mike will finally be free from irresponsible and selfish parents like you. If he cries, those will be tears of joy. The couple was speechless, their faces a mix of anger and disappointment, as they were led into the police car. Later, they were tried in a public court for their terrible treatment of their child and for attempting to kill me. I am certain that they will spend at least some time in prison. Meanwhile, I decided to legally adopt my grandson and committed to taking care of him in place of his parents. Anxiously, he asked. Can I stay at your house forever, Grandma? I nodded gently and told him. Yes, of course. This is your home now. Hearing this, my grandson showed me a smile of relief for the first time. I renewed my vow to make Mike happy and swore to support his growth and happiness closely. Ensuring Mike's happiness and watching him grow up healthy has become my most important role in life. Mom. I'm going to jump in front of a train soon. I'm really sorry. I had always thought my daughter was surrounded by happiness, yet she hadn't contacted me for weeks and I was deeply worried. When I received that sudden call from her, the shocking news made my body tremble with anxiety. What on earth has happened to her? With that thought, I immediately rushed to her in my car. When I finally met my daughter, who I hadn't seen for a long time, she was sitting with a vacant expression, as if feeling nothing. That's when I learned of the shocking events that had occurred at her in-law's house. Leave everything to me now. As I hugged my daughter forcefully for the first time in years, I lit the flame of revenge against them. Driven by anger, I decided to proceed with a specific plan against them. My name is Ava. 
I live in a quiet village, where a vast pastoral landscape spreads just a short walk away. I have a proud daughter named Emma, who has dreamed of succeeding in the big city since she was young. Time flies quickly, she grew up in the blink of an eye and moved to New York after graduating from university. After raising children, the house feels quiet and a bit lonely. However, along with my husband Gabby and my father-in-law Harry, we started a new life, and about a year later, we received joyful news of her marriage from our daughter living a new life in New York. His name is Ray, and he's my boss at work, but he's really a wonderful person. I could feel her happiness radiating through her words. Eager to witness her happiness as soon as possible, my husband and I immediately departed for New York to meet Ray's family at his parents' home. What we saw was a mansion deserving of the name, a luxurious home that felt somewhat out of place to us country folk, making us so nervous our spines stiffened. Ray's father had passed away when he was young, and the household was supported only by his mother, Kate. We have lived as a single mother household, but I have raised my son well on my own. Please entrust your daughter to me. It turned out my daughter was going to live with her in-laws and had already decided to quit her job to become a full-time homemaker. You've always dreamed of becoming a career woman, right? You were so happy to join your current workplace, so are you really satisfied with giving up your dream after just one year? When I was alone with my daughter, I asked her this question. It can't be helped, this is a condition of the marriage, as his mother says. Seeing her smile sadly, I felt an unbearable sense of unease. Knowing how much effort she had put into her job hunt, I felt her in-laws did not fully understand her feelings, which increased my distrust towards them. But I really love Ray. I've focused on building my career so far, but now I want to support him and lead a life together. Since my daughter had made up her mind, there was nothing left for me but to respect her decision. Despite feeling a bit anxious, I decided to support her decision. That's true, I'll support the life path Emma has chosen. I just want her to be happy. However, the peaceful days I anticipated did not last long. After the wedding and starting her new life at her in-laws, Emma soon discovered she was pregnant marking the beginning of a new chapter. With the birth of our first grandchild approaching, the whole family was extremely excited. Living far from New York, Emma kept us updated about the baby's growth via emails and phone calls. I saw how Emma's belly gradually grew through the photos she sent, but around her due date, suddenly all contact from Emma stopped. Deeply worried, I repeatedly tried to contact Emma's mobile phone but never got a response, only hearing the ringing tone continue. Then one day, I received a cold message indicating that Emma's mobile phone had been disconnected. My anxiety heightened, I quickly called the in-law's landline and the mother-in-law answered. Hello, Kate. I've tried several times to contact Emma but can't get through. Is there any problem? I'm very worried. Actually, Emma dropped her phone yesterday and stepped on it, completely breaking it. So, we decided to switch her to a new phone. I felt temporarily relieved, but immediately asked for Emma's new contact details. However, Kate did not provide that information. I'm sorry, but I don't fully remember the new number myself and the phone it's registered on is not reachable right now. Then, could you please put Emma on the line? I really want to hear her voice. Emma is currently heavily pregnant and moving is quite difficult for her. Considering the baby's health, I don't want to strain her unnecessarily. Thus, citing various reasons, she ended the call without giving me the phone number. After that, I continued to call the in-laws several times, but only received cold responses and could not have a meaningful dialogue. As a result, I was unable to have any direct communication with my daughter, and my anxiety only grew. I wanted to verify my daughter's condition in person, 
but the in-laws lived far away, a three-hour drive by car, making it difficult to visit easily. Additionally, with my elderly father-in-law having injured his leg, it was hard for me to leave home for long periods. Nevertheless, I had arranged for a neighbor to look after my father-in-law so I could rush over when the baby was born, and I had discussed these preparations with my daughter. As time passed, I eventually received news of the birth of my grandchild, but this notification came through a call from Kate. I'm truly delighted that the grandchild was born safely. My husband and I will start heading there right away. Despite feeling significant anger that there had been no prior notification of the birth, I suppressed my emotions and responded calmly. At that moment, Kate audibly sighed deeply, clearly intentionally. No, please do not come here. The baby is still very small, and it's not appropriate for you to be near him, coming from an area where we don't know what kind of rural germs you might bring. What if something happens? I don't think that's a fair thing to say. I'm just concerned about the well-being of my daughter and grandchild. There's no need to worry. I'm saying this because it is Emma's own clear wish. Really? I was deeply shocked and couldn't hide my confusion. From now on, Emma will primarily handle the childcare, and we as a family will fully support her. She doesn't want to meet with people who only show up at fun times, those who are not involved, that's her firm decision. Even if you say that. That's fine, so I will end the call now. I have many other things to do. With those words, she hung up the phone. Holding my smartphone, I felt a hollow emptiness in my heart as if a void had opened up inside me. I can't believe Emma really doesn't want to see me. With no way to speak directly to my daughter and completely cut off from communication, I had no way to verify the facts. Eventually, reaching my limit of patience, I contacted the company where my son-in-law Ray works and managed to get him on the phone. I'm sorry for this situation. My mother can be overly strict, and sometimes it goes too far. As soon as he answered the phone, he began to apologize politely. My mother is indeed strict, but she doesn't mean any harm. In fact, she treasures Emma very much and loves her as her own daughter. According to him, Emma is showing respect to Kate and by demonstrating her independence from us, she might be trying to communicate something. Even so, there must be a reason she doesn't want to see her own mother. Perhaps, as you say, Emma is angry with me because I have not been able to help at all? Comforted by my son-in-law's reassurances, I felt a bit calmer for the time being, but my inner unease did not completely clear. Since it's Emma's first time being a mother, she is naturally tense. When the right time comes, I plan to mediate between my mother and Emma and you, and want you to see your grandchild. That's right. Emma needs to rest after giving birth, and for now, it might be safest to follow Kate's wishes. Don't worry. No matter what happens, I am here to protect Emma, so please be assured. Hearing this, I decided to wait and see, and sent a large box filled with baby gifts that I had prepared for the birth to the in-law's house. Unfortunately, this shipment was rejected and sent back to me. The in-laws said that such a selfish gift was a nuisance. They mentioned that they would accept a monetary gift, however. Reluctantly, I transferred a celebratory amount of money to the account specified by Kate but received no thanks for the transfer. At this point, I had serious doubts about the in-laws' behavior and felt that some action needed to be taken. However, at that time, I convinced myself that avoiding conflict with Kate was in Emma's best interest. Half a year passed without any contact from Emma or Ray, and I had still not met my grandchild once. Unable to stand the abnormal silence, I considered heading to the in-laws' house on my own, when unexpectedly, a call from an unknown number reached my smartphone. Picking up the receiver, I unexpectedly heard the voice of my daughter, Emma. It's been a long time. I've been so worried. 
Congratulations on your childbirth, are you doing well? However, Emma's voice was tearful for some reason, and I could tell over the phone that she was crying. Why are you crying? What happened? I was completely bewildered, and all I could hear through the phone was Emma's sobbing. Mom. I'm planning to jump in front of a train. I'm really sorry. These shocking words directly from Emma startled me. Jumping in front of a train? What are you talking about? Wait, calm down. In this sudden crisis, my mind went blank, and in confusion, I switched the phone to speaker mode and hurriedly got into my car. Stay right there, I'm coming right now. Trembling with tears in her voice, my daughter managed to tell me where she was, and I drove for three hours to get to that place. After a long journey, I finally arrived at the park where Emma was sitting alone on a bench, looking dazed. What happened? What's going on? The baby, he's being treated like a hostage. What? Has someone taken him away? When I asked again, my daughter slowly shook her head. No, my mother-in-law has taken the baby away from me because she thinks I'm a bad wife. I'm bombarded with terrible words every day, and I can't take it anymore. As Emma continued to cry uncontrollably, all I could do was gently stroke her back to support her. That's absolutely unacceptable. Since Emma moved to New York, I've known the pain of being separated from my child. It feels like a part of me has been taken away, and I'm overwhelmed by a deep sense of loss. However, our many happy memories together somewhat soothe this emptiness. Without them, I too would have crumbled under this sorrow. Now, Emma is subjected to such harsh conditions. My heart is filled with anger, thinking of Emma being deprived of precious moments with her child and being treated like a servant. You endured well. Don't worry anymore, I'll handle everything from now on. Saying this, I hugged Emma tightly and whispered reassuring words to her. I cannot forgive the fact that my daughter and grandson are being treated so terribly. Therefore, I decided to take action immediately, and leaving Emma in the car, I headed directly to their house. When I arrived, Kate and Ray were there to meet me, but they already knew Emma had left and glared at me while being upset about the fact. Your daughter seems to lack backbone, running away from home just after her child was born. How pathetic. My daughter did not come here to be treated like a servant. Please keep your voice down. People from the countryside making a scene get looked at strangely here. My son-in-law scoffed at me, looking down as if defending their status. Ray. You said you would protect Emma no matter what. Were you deceiving us? Please don't say such things. Our family is a very prestigious family in this area. Your family and ours are incomparable. You should be grateful that we welcomed your daughter at all. I'm appalled by your despicable attitude. My anger had reached its limit, and my voice involuntarily rose. However, my son-in-law was unfazed, continuing to display a cold smirk. Our family is highly regarded in this area, and no matter how much you raise your voice, the people around here will support us. A person like you, coming from the countryside, whatever you say, no one will take you seriously. We could also sue you for neglecting the child's care. Or should we sue you for nuisance first? Their arrogant attitudes made me want to shout out in anger. But the situation was overwhelmingly against me, and swallowing my frustration, I decided to temporarily retreat and take my daughter back to our hometown. We returned home and reported everything about the in-laws to my husband and father-in-law. They were outraged by my story, particularly my father-in-law, Harry, who showed intense anger. I have a plan. We should teach them a lesson. If Gabby and Ava work together, there will be no problem. He then proposed a concrete plan to our family. 
They seemed ready to call the police on us, so we should act first. It will take some time to prepare, so let's implement this plan next week. As we were discussing as a family, suddenly Emma's smartphone began to ring. The caller was Kate. Come back home immediately. Being at ease while leaving your own child is disgraceful. Emma, with trembling hands, picked up the phone, and the torrent of harsh words was so loud that everyone nearby could clearly hear it. Hearing this conversation, my father-in-law, driven by anger and with veins popping on his forehead, muttered. Next week is too late. We act tomorrow. I fully agree with you. We cannot forgive them any longer. Let's thoroughly take our revenge in the way they would despise the most. As soon as the next morning arrived, we started our plan. Emma stayed at home with my father-in-law, while my husband and I prepared to face the in-laws again. As soon as I pressed the intercom, Kate answered. Upon seeing us, she sighed heavily. It's really enviable that some people have so much free time in the morning. We were just enjoying some quiet time as a family because my son got the day off, and now it's ruined. I've warned you before that if you come again, I'll call the police." Kate maintained an intimidating stance, clutching her smartphone tightly as if ready to call someone at any moment. You don't need to worry about that. Our preparations are already complete. As I spoke, the sound of police sirens grew louder in the distance, and Kate's expression revealed increasing agitation. Preparations? Did you call the police on yourselves? Yes, that's right. Actually, my husband used to work as a police officer when he was younger. We still have a few friends at the local police station, so I explained the situation to them and asked for their help. What exactly did you talk about? Kate, you know what I talked about better than anyone. It was about your actions. At that moment, I could hear police sirens in the distance, and it was apparent that my husband was coordinating with the police. Kate was clearly disturbed by the noise and panicked in front of us. Without hesitating, I stepped inside the in-law's home. She tried to stop me, but I brushed off her hand and continued inside. I searched every part of the house for my grandson but couldn't find him anywhere. Nor was Ray around, who happened to have the day off. Eventually, I decided to check a closet at the back of the house. When I opened the door, an unbelievable scene unfolded. There was Ray, hidden away with the baby, in his arms. What are you doing in such a place? You haven't harmed my grandson, have you? I quickly took the baby from Ray's arms and carefully checked to ensure he was unharmed. Fortunately, my grandson was just peacefully sleeping. Why are there police cars here? And why are you here? What's happening? We've reported your actions to the police and requested an investigation. Now, it's time for you to face the consequences. Despite the tense situation, Ray, still holding the baby, appeared calm. What's all the fuss about? We haven't done anything wrong. We're just keeping our child safe at home. How is that a problem? He continued to defend his actions, appearing satisfied as if he had achieved a great victory. Moreover, it's your attempt to take the child that's criminal. Actually, you should be the one taken away by the police. At that moment, my mother-in-law, my husband, and several police officers arrived at the scene. My dear grandson is being taken away. By bad people. Kate began to scream as she saw me holding the baby. Stop playing the victim. It's really annoying. I glared at her sharply, causing her to quiet her voice momentarily. I've thoroughly searched this house, and something is clearly wrong here. This is not a condition any normal family should live in. Such an environment is causing my daughter a lot of unhappiness. What's wrong with it? 
Your baseless accusations should end now. Kate, Ray. Can you really say with confidence that you've done nothing wrong? Can you truly assert that you've treated Emma properly? As I confronted them, they both nodded without any doubt. But there's no room for Emma in this house, is there? Despite her being married and living here for almost two years, there's nowhere to put her personal belongings. How do you explain that? Feeling no sign of remorse from them, I strongly questioned the doubts I had harbored in this house. I thoroughly examined every room in the house, especially the bedroom and closets, and pointed out the suspicious points. However, there was a shortage of one set of necessary bedding, and no clothes that seemed to be Emma's everyday wear were found at all. When I pointed that out, Ray clearly became agitated and looked towards the closet he had previously hidden in. Approaching the closet, I peered inside and found a thin blanket laid out, with a small pouch for women placed at the head. Taking the pouch and examining its contents, I found basic living supplies such as cosmetics and toothbrushes, along with several worn women's clothing stacked in the corner of the closet. Surely, you don't mean to say that this cramped closet is Emma's room, right? This space is so small that you can't even stretch your legs properly to sleep, right? When I pressed her like that, Kate seemed visibly perplexed, avoiding eye contact and looking elsewhere with great discomfort. Her reaction was an answer to my question, a clear affirmation. The silence in that closet must have given the baby a sense of security, thanks to the lingering scent of his mother. You've been cramming Emma into this cramped space for two years and using the child as a hostage to force her to do chores. Isn't this all just baseless speculation? What's with calling the police without any evidence, playing detective? If you need evidence, I have it right here. Saying that, I deliberately lifted my daughter's bedding. At that moment, a diary emerged from under the pillow. This is a diary my daughter kept daily records in. She herself said many times that she was writing down daily events in this diary. I didn't know there was such a diary. Kate tried to snatch the diary, but I skillfully avoided her and immediately handed the diary to my husband. If you request an investigation based on this diary, the truth of the matter will become clear. I don't know how many friends you have, but with this, they won't be able to protect you. Wait. This will damage my reputation. It would be better to solve this problem with money. At that moment, my son-in-law suddenly changed his attitude and tried to curry favor with me. His sudden change in attitude left me simply astonished. Money is not necessary. I'll immediately contact the police and proceed with the divorce proceedings with my daughter. Please, I just want to avoid divorce. I promise I won't make the same mistake again, so please forgive me. Surprisingly, Ray knelt down on the spot and begged for forgiveness. If he could reflect so deeply, why did he take such cruel actions in the first place? It's very important for me to earn trust from the company in building my career. By marrying and having a stable family, I can enhance my reputation as a professional. When I questioned his motive, Ray answered with a serious expression. It's hard to believe. Are you really saying you married her for such superficial reasons? Yes, to be honest, rural raised Emma was just a convenient option. If I get divorced now, it would greatly damage my social credit. Do you feel any remorse for how you treated my daughter? Of course, I'm remorseful. That's why I'm proposing financial compensation. I'm sure you'll be satisfied if I pay you. Watching him earnestly make this claim, I was horrified. My daughter had given up her career dreams to live as a housewife for her husband. Yet, this man was using her for his own selfish desires. Not content with just taking everything from her, he was now proposing an insulting monetary settlement to us. 
Ray, stop such disgraceful behavior. Why grovel to these country folk? As I was preparing to scold him harshly, Kate's sharp voice cut in. How can that diary be considered evidence? Just everyday delusions written all over it? Is that really okay, with you? Can you still say that in this situation? This diary is clear evidence. I'm so exhausted. Ray, divorce this vindictive woman. She was never suitable for you from the start. But mom, doing that would affect my career. Having a family, no matter the woman, is essential for workplace respect. It's okay, I can ask my relatives to find someone who knows the president of Ray's company. This minor issue will be resolved quickly. Boasting so, Kate laughed confidently and imperiously. There, are we done here? Give back our beloved grandchild and quietly return to the countryside. She declared this and pointed to the door, satisfied. However, an unexpected turn of events was about to unfold. Did someone call for me? Suddenly, that voice echoed, and a well-built gentleman walked into the room. Hello, Ava, Gabby, it's really been a while. I also spoke with your father, Harry, a little while ago on the phone. He's as lively as ever, which is truly wonderful. When this man gave us a friendly smile, Kate was visibly unsettled. Wait a minute, who are you? A friend of this country family? What are you doing entering someone's home without permission? My apologies for the intrusion. Actually, I told the police outside that I was a colleague from Ray's company, and they let me in. With those words, Kate could not hide her anger and glared at the man sharply. Meanwhile, Ray turned pale on the spot, frozen in shock. The reason soon became clear. This respectable gentleman was the president of the company Ray worked for, whom Kate had been trying to reach through her relatives. President, why are you here? Actually, I was contacted by Emma's grandfather, Harry. We come from the same hometown, and my father was his senior. Thank you for coming today, sir. No need to be so formal. I'm always ready to help a former subordinate I cared about. Former subordinate? What do you mean? How is a plain woman from the countryside close to a corporate president? Kate's surprise was understandable. I haven't told anyone, but over 30 years ago, I worked at the same company Ray works for now. My boss at that time, who is this president, introduced me to Harry by coincidence, leading to my marriage with Gabby through his recommendation. Kate has often mocked me as a country bumpkin, but actually, I am from New York. What? You worked at the same prestigious company as Ray. Emma never mentioned that. Yes, I never told Emma the truth. She believes she got her job offer through her own efforts, but in reality, Harry pleaded with the president to help her out. Emma struggled with her job search during college, and as parents, we felt her pain. Unable to control our parental instincts, we secretly used our connections to prevent her from becoming discouraged. We returned to our hometown several times and repeatedly met with the president, a friend of Harry's, to beg him to hire Emma. Fearing that Emma would be hurt if she knew the truth, we asked the president to keep it a secret. I've been watching over Ray because he married Emma, but I never imagined he would behave so dishonorably. I'm truly disappointed. President, that's not accurate. This is just a small marital dispute. No, no, when the police get involved, that sort of excuse won't work. So, as of today, you're dismissed from the company. Take this opportunity to seriously reflect on your actions. Ray's sudden discomposure was visible, sweat poured down his forehead as his voice started to shake, eventually leading to intense crying. 
Next to him, Kate also showed a shocked expression, turned pale, and suddenly knelt on the ground, desperately begging. President, I deeply apologize for my son's rudeness. However, please consider it a youthful mistake. Please give him another chance. Enough with the excuses. Furthermore, I spoke with Emma on the phone, and it turns out your son was not only causing problems, but you orchestrated it all. No, that's not true. I don't know what Emma told you, but everything I did was in the spirit of discipline. I did it out of care for Emma. Well, then, first of all, it's about disciplining your own son. He said dismissively and turned away, leaving Kate realizing that nothing more she said would matter. She then, surprisingly, turned to face my husband and me, whom she had greatly underestimated, and began to plead. Ava, I truly apologize for everything regarding Emma. I'll change my ways and truly value her from now on. Please, could you intercede with the president on my behalf? You say these words now, but it's too late. Emma will proceed with divorcing Ray. Please reconsider. Do you really want to put the baby in a situation without a mother at such a young age? What are you even saying? We're going to take our grandson and raise him. He's better off without that father, and we plan to go to the police, so you wouldn't be able to care for him anyway. Please wait. Don't give up on us. I ignored her pleas and signaled to a nearby police officer. Stop this, please. Somebody please help. Sensing the disturbance, the neighbors, unable to contain their curiosity, gathered one by one at our door and windows, peeking in with interest. Alongside them, we quietly observed as Kate struggled in tears and Ray, completely disheartened, was loaded into a police car, feeling a profound sense of relief. After the incident, the diary my daughter had kept was used as critical evidence in court, effectively securing the divorce between Emma and Ray. With the divorce finalized, my daughter was able to claim $5 million in damages for mental distress caused by her in-law's harassment and $10 million for child support. Though Ray and Kate were released from police custody, the ordeal had drastically tarnished their reputation in the neighborhood, ultimately forcing them to sell their house and relocate far away in a near-fleeing night escape. Rumors suggest they now live quietly in a remote mountain area, far from our village, in a place barely touched by cell signals. Meanwhile, a new path has opened for Emma. Thanks to the president's goodwill, she secured a position at an affiliated company close to our hometown. As she raises her child and focuses on her career, we as a family will continue to provide unwavering support.